Hello, um, my name is Justin Manasa. I'm currently a PhD student with the University of KwaZulu Natal. My thesis work is based at the Africa Center for Health and Population Studies. My focus is on HIV drug resistance. The numbers of patients accessing HIV-1 antiretroviral therapy in resource limited settings have been potentially increasing over the past 10 years. This has been accompanied by significant improvements in the quality of life of the patients that are already infected reduction in the incidence of HIV, as well as improvements in the general life expectancies. However, the emergence and spread of HIV-1 drug resistance has the potential to reverse all the gains that we've made so far, and potentially derail all our efforts to try and eliminate HIV and AIDS globally. Since 2004, the Africa Center for Health and Population Studies have been conducting an annual population-based HIV-1 surveillance program in rural KwaZulu Natal. In addition, they have partnered with, with the Department of Health to implement the Tlabisa treatment and care program in the Tlabisa Health Sub District. The aim of this work was to develop an affordable HIV-1 drug resistance monitoring system. This system must be used in the assessment of the patterns and level of HIV-1 transmitted drug resistance in rural KwaZulu Natal, as well as in monitoring HIV-1 drug resistance in patients failing first-line therapy in the Tlabisa treatment and care program. The following clips describe some of the most important results from this work. HIV drug resistance has the potential to derail the progress made in the efforts to control the HIV epidemic. Therefore, it is important to continuously survey and monitor drug resistance in naive patients and patients failing therapy. Unfortunately, most of the methods currently used are expensive to implement, especially in the context of the magnitude of the HIV epidemic in Sub-Saharan Africa. Here, we demonstrate a low-cost and open-access method for HIV drug resistance genotyping. This protocol is divided into four stages, RNA extraction, reverse transcription and PCR, sequencing and bioinformatics. The reduction in the overall cost of this protocol was achieved through four different strategies. The first one was scaling down the reaction volumes at almost every stage, thereby allowing more efficient use of reagents but at the same time maintaining sequence quality. Secondly, reduction of the sequencing primers. Most protocols use six to eight primers to sequence the pore region, covering the protease gene and the first third of the reverse transcriptase gene. A set of four primers was selected to sequence the same region without compromising on the quality of the final sequence, thereby reducing the sequencing stage cost by at least a third. Thirdly, the use of mostly free open access software and programs for sequence analysis and report generation allowed for a further reduction in cost. And lastly, collective bargaining and public-private partnerships. A discounted price was negotiated that allows members of the Southern African Treatment and Resistance Network to get discounted rates for all the components of this protocol. These have also been consolidated into a kit for ease access. This study assessed the patterns and levels of transmitted drug resistance in South Africa between 2000 and 2010. It involved a review of published studies already done in different South African provinces as well as testing for transmitted drug resistance in recently infected patients in rural KwaZulu Natal from 2010. There was no evidence of transmitted drug resistance from rural KwaZulu Natal. The review of published data showed transmitted drug resistance levels of less than 5% during the period assessed. The levels of transmitted drug resistance in South Africa have not increased significantly during the past 10 years. There is still need for continuous surveillance of transmitted drug resistance, especially in the context of increasing numbers of patients on therapy who can transmit drug resistance if they are not properly managed. This study was done to describe the patterns and levels of drug resistance within a rural treatment and care program in KwaZulu-Natal. We recruited adult patients from 17 primary healthcare clinics. 
These patients had evidence of treatment failure and we tested them for HIV drug resistance. Between December 2010 and March 2012, we tested samples from 222 patients. These patients had been on treatment for about 42 months and we discovered that most of them had been failing their treatments for about 27 months. When we tested for drug resistance, 86% of them had evidence of drug resistance, of which 15% had high level resistance that could compromise the effectiveness of the second line therapies. From these results, we see that there is need to integrate HIV drug resistance testing in routine patient management. To do this, we need to make sure that the drug resistance tests are available to the doctors at a lower cost, and this will enable the doctors to identify the reasons of treatment failure. And with this information, they can manage their patients more efficiently. Through these studies, we managed to show that the current standard fixed regimens are currently effective in almost all the patients from rural parts of Natal, as the transfer drug resistance levels were still very low. We also managed to show that biological failure should be treated as an emergency, as leaving patients on failing regimens has the potential to compromise future regimens because of the accumulation of a lot of resistant mutations. In addition, we managed to demonstrate that HIV-1 drug resistance testing can be integrated into the continuum of care of HIV-infected patients.